Are we supposed to be able to hear anything? No, not yet. <laughs> You're good. I just want to make sure that everybody. Oh, look, there's Asheville Phoenix properties. Look at them all sitting there. You guys are so cute. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> all right. Hey, I want to say thank you to Phoenix Properties for lunch yesterday. It was so good. It was really good. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Look at them all. <sighs> no, so you good. Yeah, you have to do that. Let's see. <laughs> right here. See this little thing right here? Gallery. They're waiting on us. Mm -hmm. There we go. No, we don't want that one. We won't. Oh, gallery. Can't see the bottom. Click on participants. Is that work? Yeah, that just That's just how many people are in there so far. I think there was a bucket fill before the bucket fill question got asked. Hey, 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 can everybody hear me? Yep. Head nods. Cool. Is, it, is the audio clear? It should be coming through my AirPods. Yes. I need feedback. Is the audio right? Yeah, okay. yes. I, I can hear you. You're good. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm late. It's after 11. I'm embarrassed to do that in front of Brad. I was trying to be punctual. Um, uh, welcome everybody. I think the first thing we want to start with, is anybody reading the equity statement? Yeah, yeah? pretty cool, right? So we've been doing a lot, of, uh, a lot of work with the equity committee and we've been having a, I mean, a really productive sessions. Don't forget to mute, Alex. And uh, this is our first like, company statement that we're putting out into, um, into the wide world to talk about uh, the importance of um, being involved and actually making movements to uh, rectify what problems we can and have awareness and sensitivity toward moving forward in the right way. So this will be available if any of you wanna use it. Um, and it's we're gonna put it at Mountain Express and some other places. Essentially, it is a, yeah, it's an awareness and intention statement. So we'd encourage any of you that would be excited to be part of the equity committee to come and be part of that so we can um, continue to move forward. We don't want it to go away. All right, Let's, I, we need a signal. I'm gonna do this for next slide. Next slide. All right, let's start with, uh, that's my favorite gif slash picture i think i've ever seen all right go ahead go ahead with bucket fills who we got you got it hold on he's got a mute did you switch it hey jeff yeah hey scott eastler um one i just wanted to uh to really thank 
uh, the leadership. Uh, yesterday was my very first time being able to come and uh, partake in the food trucks now that kids are back in school full time. And uh, it was just great to see uh, everyone around um, and then just really seeing that uh, our leadership um, is going above and beyond to try to keep, uh, keep the culture moving uh, during this time of COVID. So thank you so very much. John, are you speaking? We, we can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear John. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's the AirPods. All right, just, just. Uh, oh, we can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear me? So it's picking up from the. Now speaker. we can. Can you hear me now? Yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. So big bucket fill. Uh, uh, again, I was saying uh, as big. You know, we deal with some things uh, that are more challenging, uh, and uh, Amber and Jamie from Broker Asheville had some challenging situations with a, a recent transaction and man, they stepped up, they did an awesome job uh, working it through and uh, it, it's what Keller Williams is all about, working for a win-win and I can't say enough about their efforts to, to make our clients priority one in our business. But thank you, Jamie and Amber. Awesome. Yay. Thank you, John. Yeah. Any, any other bucket fill? I don't know if we, we got to publicly thank Michael Schaffner for that brisket. I'm still thinking oh, about yeah. it. <laughs> that was last month, but it sure was good. We love the brisket. All right. Make sure you make sure just once you do that. Yep. Anything else? What else? I know that's a little bumpy, but work with us. We're still figuring it out. <clears throat> no more bucket fills. The bucket fills are full. So we have no intention to fill those. <laughs> Negative? All right, we move on. All right, Jim, are you around for some, or whomever is going to be our moving mortgage? Yeah, Sean's here. Hey, everybody, it's good to see y'all, even remotely. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, first of all, on behalf of our local movement mortgage team, thank you for your business. We really appreciate the partnership. Um, we're kind of hitting on all cylinders this year. It's been kind of a crazy year, but business is up. And, um, you know, we just appreciate the relationship. Okay, Alex. Awesome. Next slide. Okay. Um, this is kind of what current rates are looking like. Every, I think every meeting we say, you know, that they're historically low and it's the lowest it's been, but they kind of keep creeping down. We're kind of skipping along on the bottom. And um, as you can see, a 30 year conventional, about 2.875, 2.75 right in there. The 2.625 is probably about the lowest that I've seen. Um, refinance rates, just for the record, are kind of a, a hair higher, usually an eighth or so. Um, the industry's trying to tap the brakes a little bit after being inundated with a bunch of refinances, the way that they do that is just by increasing the rate a little bit, just kind of slow demand, demand down some. 15 year rates are great, same with government loans. Um, again, you know, as, as you all know, the, the market's booming. Here's just some, some statistics 
the median sales price of an existing home in the U.S. in August was 310600 That's the highest ever recorded, and it's up 11% in the last 12 months. Um, and then new home starts are up as well. So things are looking good. Uh, limited inventory right now. You know, you guys are the experts on that, but we're just highlighting for the next slide, uh, Alex, that everything's taking a little bit longer. Um, you know, with new contracts nowadays, you know, we, we used to specialize in, you know, if we had somebody pre-approved, pre-qualified, you're making an offer, you know, hey, tell them, tell them we can close in 21 days and maybe that gets you the deal. You know, those, that's not the case right now. Everything's taking a little bit longer. Attorneys are taking longer. Appraisals are taking longer. You know, if you need a survey, anything like that. Um, and then of course, all the mortgage companies are taking a little bit longer too. Where we are right now, we can close in 30 days if that's, you know, if that's what it needs to be. I wouldn't write a contract for any less than 30 days, no matter what the case. We're recommending 30 day due diligence and a 45 day close. That's kind of a comfortable, a comfortable time frame for a purchase. Um, and then also you can kind of help us all out by, you know, whenever you do get somebody under contract and we're working with them or, or whoever they're working with really, you know, really encourage them to, you know, do all their paperwork and, you know, the pay stubs and all the landlord contact stuff, get that in in the first few days and that'll really help everything go smooth from then on. But uh, things, things are definitely taking, taking longer in all aspects of, of a closing nowadays. And that's all I got. Does anybody have any questions that I could help with? Any questions about lending? Thanks guys. Call anytime. All right. I'd say I'm either speaking into a vacuum or everybody woke up with fun sponges today. <laughs> all right. Ruiz report. Zach, you on here? Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. Zach, Zach, are you on? I'm going to go with a no on that. All right. At a glance, what are we, what are you guys feeling in the market? You guys, is this representative of what you're seeing? New listings up 6%. Active listings are coming down. Look at uh, look at this month last year on active listings. Forty two percent less. That's crazy. That's why it might feel like you're having multiple offers all the time, or why it might feel a bit more challenging than ever. Um, under contract, check that out. So active listings low, under contracts up thirty five percent. Home sold. Look at that. Up 3%, but down 12 versus last month. I think that's constricting inventory. Uh, expireds down, uh, down 3%. That makes, that makes sense. We have a lot of buyers for the listings. And then uh, withdrawns are down 32% because everything's selling. Jeff, was, uh, was it 16%? More hey, I just Zach, got like, Zach, like, should, Zach should be in now. Sorry, that was my B. Okay, cool. Go ahead. Um, last month, 15% higher than normal, and now we're 12% lower than normal. No, no, no. Uh, home sold as 12 percent is uh, versus last month, so it went down versus last month, and then up three percent year like this month, month over month. No, I'm saying last month's number, but that number was up. Yep. 15 percent. Okay. Versus last year, so it went from. 15% up to 12% down. That's right. Yes. All right, Zach, you can drive. Awesome. Um, so I'm not sure what you guys covered already, but the, the main story is the bottom line versus this time last year. So if you go up to the, the previous slide, or maybe it's the next one. No, it's the previous one. Yeah. So active listings, right? That's just home listed for sale currently. There's 42% less. The pie is 42% smaller, right? From people to choose from. And there's 35% more under contract. The bottom number is versus last year, what I think you guys were going over. And mm -hmm. it's basically green across the board, except for that red active listing. 
And that's not necessarily a bad thing. If anything, if you're going to a listing appointment, that's an incredible thing because there is less around. So your house will stand out more. And if you're going to a buyer appointment, well, then you get to set that tone for motivation. Like, hey, guys, there's not a lot of inventory. If you're serious, you need to make serious offers and quickly. And that's on the absorption sheet page with days on market and stuff like that. So again, the bottom row, year over year, all looking quite incredible. Um, and, and that's a good story. Two sides to that coin and, and both sides of that story are great. Average sales price, I don't know if you guys have the graph, but that's insane, right? And so during the graph as well, there's the median sales price, right? So averages take all the homes, divide it by how many that sold. So I know there's uh, some people with the Puffer Group that sold a not too horrible house uh, this month. <laughs> so a lot of the high-end market drags, drags that average price up. So then sometimes you need to look at the median. And even the median for Buncombe County, I believe, was something like $60,000 more than this time last year. The medians, if you just take all the homes, line them up in order of price from zero to top, and then just take that middle one. So prices are going up all around. And now months inventory, great way to describe that. If you guys don't know, that's a really important one. And that's if you kept the same inventory currently, didn't add anything, but kept selling at the rate that you're selling now, how long would it take to deplete all of the inventory of homes? And overall, it's two, point, two and a half months. But if you look into the price ranges, some of it's three weeks. So, you know, the market is hot. Everyone wants in. It's, it's, it's crazy, crazy times and good for business. So now here you have um, by price range. So absorption rate, if you look on the right, above 20% is generally associated with a seller's market, right? So let's just go down. 125%, well, that's above 20, right? 150%, that's above 20. The absorption rate at every category, all the way up until you get to 900,000 is extremely strong for a seller market, right? And so you look at your, your average days on market. So that is, you know, the, the home that was on the market for too long while they were trying to get pricing right, that drags that average up. If you go to an appointment, I suggest you look in more uh, to the price range you're looking at and look at that average or median for days on market for homes under contract. I suspect you will find that it is single digit days for, for the most part. Um, and then that's a great conversation for your listings. Like, hey, if you're still on the market, we got that one lever to pull, it's, it's, it's probably price. And that's right. the gist of it. Thanks, Zach, that's awesome. All right, what's happening? Uh, we are, all right, so we just had our mega camp. Did you guys realize there was 35,000 attendees? It's nuts. Did, it, did anybody participate and like the format? Yeah, it's pretty neat. There was even some uh, fun stuff like script battles and uh, it was really uh, interactive. I, th I thought they did a great job with it. Um, so if you, I don't, is it still available, the Mega Camp stuff or have they turned it off yet? Okay, so, oh, right there, sorry. So for, uh, watch out. Uh, so November 15th, uh, those recordings will be available till then so you can go on and if you missed anything. Um, all right, so we got, uh, there's another bold coming on October 20th. It is going to be a digital experience. The feedback off the last bold was there was some good positives in it, and there were some also, also some opportunities for improvement to get back to mindset stuff and what made bold really amazing um, in its inception. So they have revamped that, and they will continue to roll this out. If you guys are interested in bold, please let us know. We always have assistance programs to get you in there because we know it works. All right, KW Commercial. Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Right. Good. Right. Good. good, good, good. So I'm um, just gonna give you guys um, some updates on kind of what's going on in the commercial area. Um, while residential has been real, real strong, um, the commercial side of things kind of reminds me of what 2009 looked like. Um, you can kind of look at this graph. I'll kind of go walk through multifamily and then um, and then office and retail. Um, but if you kind of look at multifamily kind of to start with and look at 2020, there was a, a very big closing that happened um, uh, for a, a huge apartment um, complex that was uh, that's off the of New Leicester Highway um, that closed right before COVID hit. And then you can see there's been very little activity since then. Like the biggest 
sale since then was a $1.4 million deal um, over uh, outside of Waynesville. Wow. Um, cap rates that we're seeing with multifamily right now for what is moving is about seven. Um, so if you move forward to retail, you know, we all kind of know you guys are like cruising. I can't talk fast enough. Um, <clears throat> so the first quarter looked pretty good and you can see um, second and third quarter have not matched up um, anything like what last year looked like. Um, COVID has certainly affected um, restaurants and retail shops. Um, so that's, that's off quite a bit. Um, cap rates right now for retail are running about 6.7% and average uh, price per square foot's running $165 per square foot right now. Wow. Um, all right, if you move forward to office. So we all kind of know people are working from home. Um, not a lot going on. You can see that Q2 of 2020 um, was off 85% compared to Q2 of 2019. So, wow. I mean, it didn't completely stop, but almost. Um, and then in op the office space, cap rates are running at 6.3% and um, price per square foot on average is running about $176 a square foot. Wow. Okay, moving forward. Next slide. So some notable transactions, that um, big transaction I mentioned, the reserve at Asheville that closed like right at the beginning, like right around St. Patrick's Day, um, oh, that great. closed for 64 and a half million. Um, but the highest sale price since then was only 1.4 million for this, this little apartment complex out in Waynesville. A couple of notable retail sales, Innsbruck Mall on, off of Tunnel Road, you might've seen that. Um, new story sold for 8.3 million and then Hobby Lobby on Airport Road sold for 8 million. Um, in the office space, um, the medical office in Weaverville, um, that closed for 3.3 million um, just back in, I think it was August, um, and that closed at a 7.4 cap rate. Um, so kind of a nice sale leaseback deal there. Um, next slide. So kind of what's driving things right now? Um, where, why are you seeing kind of a disparity between what's going on with consumers in residential and what's going on in commercial? Well, um, fed, federal stimulus has a lot to do with it. Um, $2.2 trillion, and that's with the T. -T um, that was passed with the CARE Act. Um, and right now, Congress is looking at another $1.8 to $2.2 trillion um, going forward, that um, that will probably get passed here in the next month or so. Um, next slide. So if you kind of look at a timeline of, of kind of what's going on, you've seen the unemployment boost has expired at the end of July. Um, you've seen, you know, the 401k rules um, for easy withdrawal just expired a couple weeks ago. Um, and then kind of moving forward, December 31st has a lot of deadlines um, or expiration of, of federal programs. Um, so we don't really know what 2021 looks like. Um, the, the stimulus package that's being voted on will probably extend a lot of those things, but right now they're all slated to expire at the end of December. Next slide. Um, and just to kind of step back and look at, you know, when you talk about really big numbers like trillion, it's hard to get your head around what does that really mean? Well, a trillion dollars is a million million or a thousand billion. And to kind of put that into <laughs> perspective, to put that into perspective, we spent in today's dollars to fight the Nazis and the imperial Japanese forces, $4.1 trillion in today's, in today's dollars. And we're about to spend that much and a little bit more just fighting coronavirus in 2020. So kind of bottom line, there's a lot of economic pressure um, and we've got, you know, just unprecedented, unprecedented um, government stimulus, you know, high unemployment, stock market volatility, Interest rates are at 
you know, the real interest rates when you factor in inflation are at almost really zero. And, and there's just a lot going on with, with things, you know, a lot of us are paying attention to the Atlanta Braves, you know, playing for the pennant and probably the World Series. And, and that's what we're paying attention to. And that's exciting. And then maybe some of us are thinking about that, um, that tax return that's due tomorrow. And what's going to happen when you plug all your expenses into TurboTax tonight? Are you going to get a refund or are you right. going to have to pay some money? It's all very exciting. Um, but there's also this thing called an election that's coming up in three weeks. And so a lot of things in the economy, um, we'll see what happens. It's pretty hard to forecast things for 2021. But our best advice to you is to, to kind of pay attention to your own personal situation and have three to six months of living expenses set aside. And with the rest of your, your hard-earned cash, pay attention to opportunities that will come up. There will be some. Back to you, Jeff. That's awesome. Thank you, Brad. That was really good. That was really good. So I wanted to, uh, so who, who's busy? Give me a show of hands. Who's been really busy? So Brad, no, I'm just kidding. I, I, it's, I can only see a limited amount. Steve Cooper has so, also been busy. He just raised his hand. Okay. So we got two. That's good. I don't know what that ratio is, but it feels positive. Oh, Natalie Malice too. Three. All right. Oh, we got some busy people. Julie. All right. <laughs> I know Tim's busy. Who else is busy? All right, Brett's busy. We, look at all those people busy, the dream team. All right, so the reason I ask this is I think that time is becoming more and more important. So we have, we have different responsibilities that are popping up. We have homeschooling, we've got different ways that we're going about our business. We agree? Yeah. And where typically we would maybe, uh, you know how cell phones can get annoying? because it's supposed to give you all this freedom, but all it does is keep you on the umbilical cord all the time. So I think that we're also running into some of that with our new responsibilities and technology because it's filling space and creating more connection all the time. So I almost feel like the minutes are shrinking and the hours are shrinking. Does anybody else feel that way? Yeah. So we have an ongoing, I wouldn't call it a joke, but every morning I say that I had a conversation with John, um, right? Yeah, John Maxwell. Well, I didn't have one with him today, but I did have a conversation with another John. Got that? Is it backwards? Yeah. Oh, it's backwards on my screen. All right, so it's called The Wealthy Gardener. And I wanted to read you guys some stuff about this, or some stuff about time out of it. The first is, I want you to realize that I, the, the quote from here is, I saw that my conditions trail the use of my time and I can change what I do or keep or what I've got. The value of life lies not in the length of days, but in the use we make of them. A man may live long, but get very little. Our potential is useless without our engagement of time. Every condition we desire, including prosperity and wealth, requires a price to be paid, or outcomes re our outcomes reflect our hours. We miss the height of our fullest potential by not engaging in the quiet parade of days. Does that mean anything to anybody? So, first thing you do is you create an impact activity. Any guesses on what an impact activity is? Now, you know Sherry Puffer just said lead gen, but <laughs> does anybody else have an idea on impact activity? Care calls. Care calls. That's great. That's an impact activity. What was that? Taking somebody, Taking somebody to lunch. Give me another impact activity. Providing, better say something. Above and beyond. You guys. What's that? Providing service above and beyond. Yep, I think that's great. An impact activity is an action that earns a goal or condition. If we're unhappy with the harvest we're reaping, we should sow different seed. If we're busy every waking hour and getting nowhere and getting nowhere fast, we need to change what we're doing so we use the hours better. We need impact activities that produce better results. Doing the right thing is more important than doing the thing right. Okay, 
What do you think comes after impact activity? Guesses? So we're gonna break it down to an impact hour. So this is where it kind of hit me. All the flowers of tomorrow are in the seeds of today. So what are you doing to find your impact hour? So can you imagine if rather than being reactive and running through your day, you indicated or you dictated, this will be my impact hour every day. How many of us are doing that already? So I'm not, okay? Anybody else not doing it? Right, right. So I spend a lot of time chasing smoke, putting out fires, solving problems that don't need to be solved. You know, all those fun things. So an impact hour. So an impact hour is 60 minutes of doing the right thing, the right things that lead to a critical outcome. An impact hour is the opposite of a hollow hour and it moves us forward toward our goals. It's an hour of effort that adds to the great volume of work that, that is required for achievement. We all use the same time clock, but it's obvious that some people have more impact than others. Our dreams may begin as inspiration, but dreams are earned by daily hours. Impact hours are the cement blocks that form the foundation of worthy achievement. Most dreams die in this plotting and action phase called work. They starve from lack of daily impact hours. So that provided a lot of clarity to me. So I, I was, this actually, I was reading it last night and I was like, where, so A, what are my impact activities, right? And number two, am I dictating an impact hour? And I know that if I've had coaching, coaching sessions with a lot of you, I talk about it, you don't need to prove anything to me and do five hours of legion a day. What I ask you for is what? 30 minutes is my first request. That's an impact half hour, right? So regardless of what you're doing with your business, you, the, the comment about reaping what you sow, you will, your achievements and your ability to break out of this and dictate your path is based on where, what you're gonna do minute by minute and hour by hour. So if you can do nothing else during what might be environmental chaos to you, things are a lot different. Remember it said the cement and the foundation of it is your impact hour. So I'm encouraging you all to find your impact hour. So I was thinking about maybe even doing t-shirts or creating an impact hour club because it's my, I'm gonna put it on my four on one. I, I'm going to find my impact hour. I can work during the day, but I will find impact hour. Is anybody else willing to do that with me? Got some takers. No one from the dream team. That's right. It does. Yeah. Like it's just being more intentional. But I like what you did because it's even more attainable. It's only an hour. It's not your entire eight-hour day. Nope. But I think that's a like concept. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you all for letting me share that. All right, so let's go back to. Stuart said enough. All right. <laughs> All right. In this case, I am moving this. Uh, so let's send this link out for efficiency's sake, Alex. I can do that. So there's tactics for 450 leads a month, and we'll send you a link to this. This is a great video, but for efficiency's sake, we're going to go on. All right. Asheville Phoenix Properties. Hello. Hello. Hey. How's everybody? We're doing great. Thumbs up. Great. Thumbs up, everybody. You good? So this is the team, Asheville Phoenix Properties. And as you know, Pat Puckridge started this um, in 1997. My partner in the sales team and my best friend. And in 2000, we met. I'm just giving you a little history. In 2000, we met in, uh, at Keller Williams. On the in the Tunnel Road office, there was about maybe 20 of us at the time. And what we did was we ended up making a team together, a sales team, and um, she let me have half of Phoenix Property. So that's how I got involved. Anyway, so that started in 1997 up to 2000 when we met, and we had probably 75 properties when we started, and now we're up to about 600. Woo. It takes a while to get there, but we're, you know, we're finally there. 
And um, also, we started downtown. We actually started in the um, Tunnel Road office, and then we moved down to the 53 Ashland, and we were in the basement. Mike Tavner actually asked Pat, our beloved Mike Tavner, asked Pat if uh, she would bring her property management company to Keller Williams because she didn't want, he did not want agents doing rentals. He wanted somebody who was experienced with that doing it, and that's what happened. So that's how we got involved was through Mike Tavner, with quite a few things actually with Mike Tavner. <laughs> we have a wonderful team here. Um, I'm going to introduce Linda Baker. She's our administrator, and she's going to give you some bullet points um, for you as agents. Hey guys, so I'm Linda Baker, and for uh, those of you that don't know, I've been with uh, Pat and Donna for 15 years now, working at Asheville Phoenix Properties. Um, and we just wanted to take a minute to remind everybody that we are still here. Um, we met a lot of people when we office downtown um, about six years ago, um, but we're still in the business and we still offer referrals to agents that bring us new homes to manage. So currently we are offering a $200 referral fee if you bring us a new home, or we'll give you 10% of one month's rent, so whichever is greater. And we're also awesome. offering Keller Williams agents a bonus right now if you bring us a home before the end of February, we'll give you another $100 bonus as well. So that's $300 uh, minimum just for bringing <laughs> us a new home to manage. So um, we'd be happy to work with you. Uh, you can let your clients know that we charge a management fee of 11% of the rents we collect. Um, but with Keller Williams agents, if you bring us your own personal homes to manage, we only charge a 10% management fee. So bring us your business, i will be happy to work with you guys. And also we never solicit, Pat and Donna never solicit agent leads, so keep that in mind. Um, and we know you're short on time, so we just wanna take a quick minute to introduce the rest of the team for you. Um, we did put information yesterday in every agent's mailbox, so uh, check that out, um, give you a little bit more information on our team, and you feel free to give us a call with any questions once you get that. So quickly, we've got uh, Teresa. I'm Teresa Gillespie. I've been uh, with Pat and Donna for 15 years as well. I handle all the financial transactions between tenants and owners, along with my assistant, Brittany. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she also helps, she handles all of our sales team stuff, too. That's awesome. My name is Christina Richardson. I've been with Asheville Phoenix Properties about seven years. Uh, I'm the leasing agent. Um, She's the biggest problem on the team. I am. Yep. yep. <laughs> I'm a huge problem. I'm, I'm a little bit of a uh, <laughs> trouble starter. Um, but no, we've been extremely busy. Um, I mean, we thought for sure, we you know, with COVID and everything, thought for sure we're going to slow down. We are slammed. The rental market has not stopped. Yeah. Um, it's full blown. So if you know anybody, you know, send us, you know, we'd love to manage, um, you know, people that are looking for rentals, you know, anything. Um, it, the rental market, as the sales market, rental market has not, oh, has not you stopped. to them, Lise? Um, do what? The, back, the background checks and stuff. The application process. Mm -hmm. So Katie, um, who is our front office coordinator, and Reese uh, Murray, she's also my right hand. Um, we screen all of our tenants, um, complete credit, criminal background check, income verification, rental references. Uh, you know, if they have pets, we use PetScreening.com to to create pet profiles, um, so that we can get the best possible tenants for our property owners. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Okay. My name is Katie Ritter. I have been with Ashley Phoenix for about a year, a little over a year. I am the rental specialist and um, Christina's backup when she needs it. Um, and I'm usually the first point of contact when you call the office with any questions. Um, so I can get you where you need to go if I can't help you personally. Right. I am Miranda Roberts. Um, I'm the maintenance coordinator here. I've been with Phoenix for about four years now. Um, and I handle all the maintenance between property owners and tenants, getting repairs done. All of that. Mm -hmm. I'm Sharon McIntyre. I've been with Asheville Phoenix Properties for five years. I'm marketing coordinator and I back up everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brittany Mall. I'm the accounts assistant. I've been here for seven months. So that's it. We just want to thank you. I hope you enjoyed your lunch yesterday. Thank you, Alex, for getting that together. And um, yeah. I just really appreciate the opportunity to come here and talk about our um, company because we haven't been, we haven't done this in a long time. So thanks. Thank you. And I'm very proud of this team and bring us your business. We'll take good care of them. That's awesome. And uh, how long have you been at Keller? 20 plus years. 
So she's one of the OGs. So when you guys read that MREA, that red book, we talk about what it looks like to build a business. Uh, Pat, Pat and Donna have done so. They have a mega, our only mega agent office. It's in Biltmore Village and uh, a, a great example of how to build different income silos and how to see the process through. So um, always reach out to them. visit too if you want to. You can come visit. Yeah, go visit them. Um, yeah. Great, great people to check in, in to, uh, or in with on questions or like anything that if you're trying to build your business. So thank y'all. I appreciate you. Bye. All right. All right. We got uh, Jacob, I think. Yeah. All right. Hey. Let's see. Can you see me? Hey. You can see yeah. you. Cool. Hey, guys. I'm Jacob. Um, I am new in role as the Market Center Tech Trainer. Um, looking forward to working with all of you. Um, a lot of you I've met and worked with. Um, I want you to know that I'm here to help. Uh, get your tech stuff straightened out, make sure it's helping you build your business. We have a lot of awesome tools and we have a lot of really, really cool updates in the pipe right now. So, um, Maybe. second search emails and notifications. Um, so this is an enhancement to the existing save searches where you can now specify how often you want your, uh, your save search emails going out. That's you can awesome. have it, uh, just like, uh, just like our MLS tools for our drip campaigns, um, weekly, instant, monthly, you can pick. Uh, outside of that, there's not a whole lot of change. Don't think there's anything else to talk about on that one. Okay. Change the slide, Jeff. I got it. Cool. Okay. Let me move this. You never should have let me do this. All right. You told me to let you do it. That's true. <laughs> That's true. He's already a smart ass. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, he has transitioned and market leader in the marketplace. I, that that's coming soon. Haven't heard a whole lot of update about that. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that's kind of stuff that's already been happening. Yeah. So hoopla. Yeah. All right. Um, so let, let me tell you a little bit about the, so MCTT market center tech trainer, the reason we, uh, so Danny is still available to help as well. Jacob's taking the lead on taking us to the next level as far as having access to new technology and bringing the whole level of the market center up from a technology standpoint. So we're working on a lot of different um, projects right now that will be rolling out very soon. And uh, he's doing a fantastic job on it. We couldn't be more happy on that. All right, John, what you got? All right. Uh, hope everybody's having a great day. And uh, I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the uh, the big resources you guys have. Uh, and it's gonna transition into a little bit different uh, flavor for the big moment in future meetings. So we do have uh, four market centers, uh, soon to be, or four business centers, soon to be five. Uh, and that means we have five VIX. Uh, we all have different strengths and different things to offer. And what I'd like to do moving forward is rotate that big moment between the VIX of the different business centers. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. Uh, I, I'm sure that the other VIX are excited to, to kind of chime in as well. The other thing I want to do is try to bring a little bit more value. I kind of rushed through these big moments uh, just telling you that I'm here and that I'm available. So uh, I want to at least bring a topic to each big moment. And the first topic that I want to talk about today, and if you have any questions, we can do a little short question and answer period, is the clear cooperation as it relates to uh, what's always been known as pocket listings. And unfortunately, clear cooperation has effectively eliminated pocket li listings. Uh, yep. We had a, uh, a, a big meeting at LOTSAR uh, through Zoom, and we really grilled the Canopy representative to find out whether this is exactly what's happening, and it is. So I want people to be really aware that when we start sharing coming soon, which really is a status in MLS that shouldn't be used unless you actually have the listing under uh, that status on the MLS. When you start sharing coming soon properties or things that are coming up on the market, uh, you're at risk of a violation. So you have to be really careful about that. Uh, the best thing you can do is to try to get your client uh, to do an exclusive listing agreement with our firm. That way you can market it uh, within our closed uh, communication places like Facebook and, and our inner office emails. So as soon as that gets out, whether it's intentional or not, you have 24 hours to get that on the MLS. That's where it really messes with people that are used to having pocket listings. And we've had some 
some real pushback and I'm not sure if they're ever going to change it. They may, but that means that, you know, you have a neighbor that says, Hey, um, I'll, I'll sell. If I, if I give a good price, I'll sell. Keep me in your mind. Uh, technically we're not allowed to do that anymore. We can't uh, drop those, those names on people or properties on people without having a listing agreement. Uh, again, this is challenging. Uh, nobody's real happy about it. Um, but I just want to bring that to your attention. And if you have any questions about that, uh, we can talk about it right here and, and we'll, you know, talk about it in the future as well. Anybody any questions about clear cooperation or pocket listings? Yeah, it's a downer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought I'd bring the meeting down to the ground. And, Thank you, John. You know, <laughs> well, Facebook, Facebook seems to be a, a, a sketchy place to do it because you know it, it can be shared, it can be disseminated elsewhere, and there may be people that are on our Facebook group may not be agents with us anymore. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So we're taking a risk, uh, and again, uh, you know. The way it gets, the way it gets to the MLS is people report you. Uh, yeah. So our, our closed Facebook group is not uh, an agent exclusive Facebook group. Uh, we do have vendors on there. We do have, uh, you know, I'm so excited for Elite to be joining our market center, but as of right now, they're not. And we do have agents from a different firm, Elite, on our Facebook page, as well as agents that leave that we don't exit out of that Facebook group. So you know, our intention is going to be. To move that Facebook group more into an exclusive agent uh, platform where we can feel confident to have those exclusive listings and be able to market with each other. I guess my suggestion is to do target marketing with our agents through their personal or through their business emails. Right, which is in the intranet, you can do that safely, yeah, exactly. as I understand it. Exactly. Okay. All right, that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for bringing the energy down, John. I appreciate it. <laughs> we all bring different skills. That's, we all have skill set. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's do some awards, let's do some celebrations. All right, we're going to go into written volume. Now, this is going to get weird because I'm going to clap. I'm going to encourage people in this room to clap. But if you guys could fake a clap or hoot and a holler, that would be awesome also. Cool. All right, Marie Reed team, look at that written volume, 9.5 million. Uh, woo, John's impressed. Johnson Property Group, 1.7 million. Written volume, 1.8 million. Armor team. They did that from an RV. Let's see. All right, written volume, Greg, 896. Good job. Lori Reese at 3.4 million on written. I talked to Lori the other day and she was like, what? Uh, I did that much. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, written volume individual, Cynthia Thornton. And we're going to go to closed volume. Broker actual 9.5 million. Closed volume group, 3 million. Johnson Property Group. And closed volume team, Puffer Property, 7.7 .7 million. Close volume for team Esther Group at 1 million. Individual, Lori Reese, 1.6 million. I know there's so many. We got this though. Right. Vicky, 1.1 million. Close individual. All right, I'm going to go to listing volume. Marie Reed team, 5.5 million. Good job. And Johnson Property Group, 2.6 million. Buffer Property is 1.7. I'm going to give you seven on that. Oh, the clap. That was cool. I don't know how to do that. Uh, listing volume for team, the Esker Group, 385,000. And Danny Muse is 2 million. Look at him. Handsome devil. All right, Karen Perry, 1.1 million. Good job, Karen. All right, let's go to commercial. Yeah. Carla Barnard, 7.3 million on listing. Good job. 233,000 on closed volume. Good job, Carla. And 
And then now it's capper time. Thank you. Capping is going to 100%. That's the most fun. And we did remove the uh, transaction fee. So the, oh, there we had an over cap transaction fee of $25. That has moved on to someone else's firm. All right. Cappers, we got Tim, Natalie, Barry, Emily, Athena, Abigail, Renee, and Modern Asheville. Congratulations. And we have a special capper treat coming, just so you guys know, which you won't know, other than the 100%. We got something cool happening. And I lost my clicker. Hold on. Okay, now I'm good. Home Run Award. We got Casey, Chuck, Cynthia, David, Lorene, Greg, Jonathan, Karen, Kevin, and Samantha. Good job on the Home Run Award. All right, first closing. Billy May managed to get some closed. That's a joke because he does a ton of business. <laughs> Kyle, is that Michelina? Is that how you say that? Michelina. Michelina, okay. And Alexandra, congratulations, y'all. All right. A big thank you for participating in our sales meeting. Uh, we're going to have some more updates and we've got uh, really cool stuff coming on the next one. So we've got an announcement on some new products that we're releasing to the agents that are FOC free of charge. That are going to create a huge benefit for you. Um, tech stuff we're working on is really good. And we've got some more updates on the equity committee. So please join us. If you're interested in equity committee, please do that. And we also have uh, committee meetings, which we call masterminds now. We'll have you taken the OWL camera into the committee meetings. And I want anybody to participate that might have an interest in creating some more benefit or some more change, or just saying things are pretty good and how can we make it better? Thank that's you all for being tomorrow, here. tomorrow, by the way. And that's tomorrow, yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, it is meetings. in the calendar, right? Yep, it, they start at noon. So do it, do it, do it. All right, do it. All right, thanks y'all. We'll see you next time.